uh, we already know when you get arrested by a criminal complaint, right? Uh, that means you have about, you know, 10, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you guys know that the government has about 10 or 14 days to, to indict you, right? So now here is the indictment, which is a pretty, it looks like a pretty simple indictment, right? Right. Not, not too long, a couple pages. So we can go through it. Um, so what, August 16, 2018. Damn. Why'd they take? So oh, this, this is probably a superseding indictment. Okay. Um, so here we go. Terrell Davis, right. And, and all the people that were indicted, Manu Jones, uh, Larturo Bridges, Marketh Thomas, um, Kev Kevin Harp, William Rhodes, uh, Brenton Mitchell, Antoine Morrison, uh, Kentavis Scott, Bilal Muhammad, Michael Hennecutt, Christian Harp, Shinquita Potts. Um, excuse me, guys. Like I said, I'm not, I'm feeling a little under the weather, so excuse me. Um, well, let me make sure I catch all the chats here if I didn't, if I missed any. See a bunch of you guys saying G get Y B better. You guys are hilarious, man. You guys enjoying the, enjoying the, this uh this episode, by the way, man. Give me ones in the chat if you guys are enjoying it. Okay. All right, cool. We're caught up. All right. So um, okay, so this is a superseding indictment. Okay, this makes sense. Why it's why it's so late. So, guys, a superseding indictment is nothing more than he was indicted and then they came back with more charges. So they did a superseding indictment. So now this the new indictment overrides the one that was prior. Okay, this one has new charges. So count one. Beginning on a date unknown to the grand jury, but at least by in or about December 2017 and continuing continuing until on or about December 22nd, 2017 in the Northern District of Georgia and elsewhere, the defendants Terrell Davis, also known as Rollo, and then you got all these other people, um, did willfully and intentionally combine, conspire, confederate, agree, and have a tactic understanding with one another and other persons known and unknown to the grand jury in violation of Title 21 United States Code 841A1, which is possession, that is Possession with the intent to distribute a controlled substance with conspiracy involving at least 100 kilos of a mixture and substance containing a detectable amount of marijuana and Schedule 1 controlled substance. Okay. Count two. Honor about December 22nd, 2017, in the Northern District, District of Georgia and elsewhere, the defendants, Terrell Davis, also Rollo, and then these are the other people, did knowingly and intentionally possess with intent to distribute a controlled substance. That is at least 100 kilos of a mixture and substance containing a detectable amount of marijuana a Schedule One Control Substance in violation of Title Twenty One A Forty One A B One blah 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 da da right and then count three, which one is this one? Okay, yeah, conspiracy. So A Forty Six guys is 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 a conspiracy twenty eight twenty one USC A Forty Six, and then count four, this one. Oh yeah, because there's different people in in the uh, in the indictment, and then count five. Okay, honor about. Uh, April 15, 2018, Northern District of Georgia. The defendant, Benton Mitchell, also known as OG and William Rhodes, also known as Chaos, aided and abetted by each other and others, known and unknown to the grand jury, didn't only possess a firearm in furtherance of a drug trafficking crime for which they may be prosecuted in the court of the United States. That is possession with intent to distribute marijuana as alleged in uh, count four of the superseding indictment in the violation of Title 18, United States Code 924C. Okay. <laughs> And that right there, gentlemen, is why they went after these guys so hard. Basically, right, and the indictment shows it all. Remember, guys, a criminal complaint, you just, you know, you're just typing up an affidavit because you got them in custody. You need to get them, you need to get some kind of charging document on them so that you can keep them in jail, right? So now they come with the superseding indictment. And the superseding indictment has pretty much everything here. And you can see here, guys, that they went after these dudes because they were trafficking marijuana interstate. Not only that, they had guns when they were doing it, guys, okay? Anytime. You sell drugs and you also have guns. It doesn't matter how little the drugs are, guys. They're going to come after you for for um, 924C. If you guys are wondering, 924C is how they got Pusha Iste, Okay? Pusha Iste, same shit. Not only was he robbing the guy, right, which that's a whole, we made a whole joke on that, right? Basically, long story short, he robbed some dude of, of marijuana and Jordans, right? Which, by the way, he was renting his McLaren as well. But the problem is that he robbed him. OK, and it affected interstate commerce because he robbed them for sneakers that he found online because the dude runs an online sneaker resale business. So that was definitely a big. And then the fact that he possessed a firearm in the middle of a drug trafficking crime and he shot his gun. OK, is why he's getting so much time. All right. So possession of a firearm while committing a drug trafficking crime is like an automatic mandatory five years minimum. It's like mandatory, okay? Count six. 
On or about April 15, 2018, Northern District of, of Georgia, the defendant, Benton Mitchell, also known as OG, who was then under indictment for a crime punishable by imprisonment for a term exceeding one year, that is, a criminal attempt to con- commit armed robbery in a criminal case, right? Aggravated assault. Look at this. It's a federal case. Possession of a knife during commission of a felony criminal case. God damn. Did, did willfully receive a firearm that is a Springfield Armory XD 9mm pistol said firearm having been shipped and transported interstate and foreign commerce in violation of Title 18 United States Code 922N and 924A1D. Holy shit. I'll tell y'all right now, that dude is looking at some time. Okay? <laughs> He's looking at some time. Count seven, on or about April 15th, 2018, in Northern District of Georgia, and the defendant Quint- uh, Quintavis Scott, also known as Draco, aided and abetted by... Uh, by others known unknown to the grand jury didn't only possess a farm and furtherance of a drug trafficking crime for which he may be prosecuting a court in the United States that is possession of intent to distribute marijuana as alleged in court account for the superseding indictment in violation of title eight United States code 924 C God damn honor about May 17 2018 Northern District of Florida or Georgia and elsewhere the defendant Markeith Thomas did knowingly and intentionally possess with intent to distribute a controlled substance that is a mixture and a substance containing a detectable amount of marijuana schedule one in violation of title 21 841 uh, a, and then count nine. What did this guy do? Yep, he also Marquis Thomas didn't only possess a farm. Wait, hold on. Yep, yeah. So he got him with the drugs, and they got him with the possession of a farm in furtherance of a drug trafficking crime as well. And then we got our boy uh, on or about May 17, 2018, in the North District of Georgia, the defendant Marquis Thomas having been convicted of at least one of the following felony offenses. God damn. Yep, he got. He's a convicted felon, trafficking heroin. Yep. Yep, 922G, felon in possession of firearms. So they got him for that as well. Fuck. So they got him for the possession of, of, of marijuana, right? Trafficking in marijuana. Then they got him for possession of a firearm while committing a drug trafficking offense. And they got him for felon in possession of a firearm. <laughs> Bro. My man literally had the worst people with him to be doing these kinds of crimes. Count 11, all right? Arthur Ott, also known as Keith, having been convicted of following a felony offense that is armed robbery in or about 2008 in the Superior Court of Newton County, Georgia, that after said conviction being for a crime punishable by imprisonment for a term exceeding one year, did knowingly possess at least one of the following firearms, a Taurus Model P, T111 Millennium G2 9 millimeter pistol and nine rounds of Remington 9 millimeter ammunition, all in violation of Title 20, <laughs> Title 18, United States Code Section 922G1. Oh my God. So let me get this straight. Not only are you trafficking drugs from California to Georgia on a private jet, okay? Large sums, okay? Hundreds of pounds, but you're trafficking and get with convicted felons who also have guns. <sighs> Bro, literally, if I was the feds on this one, I'm I'm just like that was easy. Like this is too easy. Like you guys are literally like it you it doesn't get any crazier than that. Now now you guys know why they went after Rollo and his team so hard. Normally guys, I'll be honest with y'all. I used to get people for weed all the time, right? Remember, I didn't do shit unless it was 100 kilos or more, right? We couldn't take, like, the the AUSA wouldn't even, I wouldn't even leave my house if it wasn't at least 100 kilos, right? But if it's just weed, it's not that big a deal. But when it's weed, right, and guns, they're coming after you, bro. And, And this dude had hundreds of pounds, all right? And I know in Georgia and Atlanta, they're not that busy where they they can turn down 500 pounds. They're going to, in Georgia, they're going to take 50 pounds if it involves guns as well. You know what I'm saying? I was on a Mexican border, bro. We were getting thousands of pounds when I was there. Thousands. Thousands. Okay? It's like another day in the office. Oh, caught a, you know, tractor trailer with 2,000 pounds of weed. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Another day in the fucking office. Right? But um, with these guys, and it was that shitty Mexican weed too. It wasn't like, it's not like that good California shit. He probably got that good California stuff. You know, he was going all the way to California to get it and then bringing it back, probably that hydroponic shit. But we were getting that shitty Mexican weed with weeds in it, with seeds in it and shit. All right? So I know for a fact that going on a private jet, buying hundreds of pounds of marijuana, 
making the kind of money he was making, right? And then also having a bunch of convicted felons with you, right? Traveling with you, having guns. Bro, it, it's literally like I cannot even like. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then uh, upon conviction of more. Uh, so this is the forfeiture guy. So basically, they're going to take the money. Look at this. They're going to take. Oh, shit. Okay, let, let's. Okay, this is going to be an even bigger L right here. <sighs> Upon conviction of one or more of the controlled substance offenses alleged in counts one through four and count A of the superseding indictment, the defendants Terrell Davis, also known as Rallo, Manu Jones, and all their names, right, uh, shall forfeit to United States pursuant to Title 21 United States Code 835-853-A, all property, property constituting or derived from proceeds obtained directly or indirectly as a result of the said violations and all property used or intended to be used in any manner or part to commit to facilitate the commission of said violations, including but not limited to the following. Money judgment, a sum of money in United States currency equal to the amount of proceeds each defendant obtained as a result of the offenses for which the defendant is convicted. God damn. And then real property. Looks like we got six properties. All right. Currency and bank funds, 39920 in U.S. currency is seized on or about April 18, 2018 at 701 Walden Boulevard, Atlanta, Georgia. $336 in United States currency is seized on or about April 18, 2018 at 701 Walden Boulevard, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, an undetermined amount of U.S. United States currency is seized on or about April 18, 2018 at 1177 Lucille Avenue, Atlanta, Georgia. Any and all funds maintained in SunTrust bank account numbers ending in 73. 87 and 4003, both held in the names of Pharmacy. Oh my God. Famrica LLC. And then all these vehicles. God damn. And then nine, 2011 Ford Eco Line E37 350 van bearing the VIN. And then also they're going to take these guns. God damn, bro. Y'all want to see? Let's see. Let's see how much. Okay. You know what? Let's have a little bit of fun. Give me a one in the chat if you guys want me to run each of these properties and see how much each of these houses is worth. Give me a one in the chat if you guys want me to do it. If you want me to continue on, just give me a two. Give me a one in the chat if you guys want me to run these properties and we can see how much he's about to lose. Or uh, give me a two if you guys want me to just keep going. I'll let the chat decide. All right. Let's do it. So we got the first property here. All right. And this one's an apartment complex. This is where they did the search point, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see here. All right. All right. So I'm on Zillow. Now, Zillow is not the most accurate, guys, but it's, uh, it's not bad. So let me see here. Hold on, first and foremost. Let me put this address in. So let's see what this address is first, okay? So if I'm not mistaken, I'm almost certain this is the apartment complex they did the raid at. Okay. All units. All right, so this is it. Yeah, I'm almost certain this is yeah, this is where they did the, the okay, so this is where they did the um uh this is where they raided uh uh his house originally. All right? This was his his apartment complex and there's 20 units it looks like. All right? So, let's go ahead and punch in this address. Okay? And see this is going to man, this this one's going to hurt. I could already tell. This is a very This is a fucking uh Apartment complex. Hmm. Hold on. God damn it. Zillow fucking trash. All right. Okay, so it's saying... This is what it's telling me. 215,000. Okay. Really? 215,000. But this is an apartment complex though. Hmm. Okay. This is all we'll, we'll we'll come back to that one. We'll come back to that one. Okay. So the other address, okay, is 
here and I'm going to I'm going to move this over here guys. All right. So the next one is 701 Walden Boulevard. Okay. All right. So now we're going to systematically start moving through these bad boys. All right. Here's the other one. Bam. Bam. Okay. This one is worth 519,000, okay? So, I'm going to start running a, a a calculation on these right now. So, we got 215,000 plus 519,000. Okay? We're at 734k. All right, someone in the chat keep keep uh keep tapping that, right? Now, next house is going to be 1945 Kimberly uh Kimberly Road, which we know this one is what what the uh what one of the Sprinter vans that if I'm not mistaken came back to. One of the one of the one of the uh one of the vehicles that was used to transport the the drugs. All right, this one, what the fuck? There we go. Okay, this house is worth one hundred thirty thousand. So now we're up to 864,000, right? Now, next house, 1908 Kimberly Road, Atlanta, Georgia. So he, has, he owns 1945 and he owns 1908. This one, 176,000. All right, now we're up to a million dollars in real estate. And he also owns 1918 West Kimberly Road, Atlanta. Uh, bro, you know what? I guarantee each of these houses is a fucking stash house, probably, man. All right. 22 grand. God. Oh, it's worth. Okay. It's worth 191,000. Okay. Okay. God damn. Hold on, did I have the other one right? 19, 1908, real fast. Did I have that one right? Okay. Uh, it, it sold for 176. All right, so let me add another 13,000. I accidentally... Uh, Yeah, another... No, another... Yeah, 13,000. But I'll just say another 13. All right, I'm up to about... 1.2 right now. All right, 229 Maple Street, Atlanta, Georgia. And I think this is the last house, guys. Here we go. 266,000. All right, 1.5 mil, pretty much, is what I'm at. God damn, bro. Holy. <laughs> the government is not playing around. So, oh, wrong one. My bad. Uh, it was this that I was going to show y'all. Okay. So, yeah, man, we're looking at fucking, wow, incredible. A lot of, a lot of money. <laughs> a lot of money. Yeah, 1.5. 1. 5, 1. 5, it looks like uh, for all those houses. And then another 40K. So, yeah. And then, oh, these cars, too. We need, yeah, we didn't even talk about <laughs> all these cars as well. This is probably going to be another easy um, couple hundred thousand as well with these homes, with these cars. I mean, 2015 Lamborghini Aventador Coupe. Like, we already know what time that one's going to be. That one's going to be worth a couple hundred thousand by itself. Because Aventadors are hard to come by, especially now with the way the market is. Yeah, these cars. I don't know the mileage, so we won't be able to get an accurate thing, but this is going to be a couple hundred thousand, these, all these vehicles. God damn. And we, and we don't know, guys. Here's the other thing, too. I mean, the guns, who gives a fuck about the guns? A couple hundred, probably pieces of shit. But um, the other thing, too, guys, remember, they're also going to take all the money from his, uh, where is it? Um, all the money from his, um, from his LLC. So all the merch sales, everything, they're going to take it. Any money that's in there, and I guarantee his music money's in there as well. So 
they're going to take all that money, man. Because as soon as you have, you like what I tell y'all, man, drug money, as soon as it's commingled in with, with legit money, the government could take all of it, man. So, whew, man, this is not good. Not good at all. All right. Um, so, chat, uh, hit me with any questions, guys. We'll open it up for the Q&A part now. Um, oh, and then actually, you know what? Let me pull up his... Uh, let me pull up his his thing real fast for y'all. Real fast. I'll pull this up. So here's his actual case as well. But yeah, guys, start getting in your cues now because uh, your questions now because I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do the QA here in a second. Logging in. Okay. So here's his actual case, right? And uh okay, let me check here, make sure I didn't miss any of you guys on. Oh, you guys are wondering how much time he's going to do? He hasn't been sentenced yet, guys, it looks like. I don't think he's been sentenced yet. Okay, yeah, this was the houses. Okay. So, um, so he, as you guys can see, here he is, right? This is, uh, this is Rallo, right? What they hit him with, they hit him with the, um, all control substance charges. Luckily, he didn't get no gun charges, you know, luckily for him. He, he had his team holding the guns for him, <laughs> Right, which is why these guys are in bad spots, all of them. Um, here's his attorney, right? Looks like he has a couple of them here. Right, these are all the defendants. See, a couple of them already got sentenced, guys. You can see. Rallo still hasn't been sentenced yet. He's he's probably going to be the last one to get sentenced. But uh, a couple of guys. So this guy got here 60 months, right? So he's got five years. He got um He probably pled guilty, which is why some of the charges got dismissed. This guy got sentenced 60 months. Okay. Um, let's see who else. Oh, this guy got dismissed, dismissed, dismissed. Okay, this guy got 72 months. Okay. Who else? This guy got 72 months. This guy got 60 months. So it looks like everyone is doing somewhere between five to eight, nine-ish years. This guy also got 60 months, which is five years. This guy got 15 months. Oh, the woman, Shinkita Potts. What did she get? They just got her for the drugs. 15 months. She probably had no criminal history. All those other guys definitely had a record, man. God damn. Um, and also, she's a woman. We all know women serve, serve like 60% less time typically. But she probably, but to, be, but to be honest, everyone else had a criminal history, which is why they were getting, you know, hit hit on those pretty hard. Yeah, these are all the arrest warrants executed, right? Um, and then this is the stuff that you guys can look at. So look, if you come down all the way here, everyone pretty much got their judgments. So they're still waiting on Rallo. Rallo's probably going to get uh, sentenced here, uh, some soon because if you guys look here. Look, these people got sentenced literally like a week ago, right? March 17th. So Ronald's going to be coming up soon. Now, here's the thing, guys. If he gets um like 60 months or whatever, he's only, he's already been in jail since like 2018. So he's he's only going to do like another two years probably because they're going to give him something called time served, okay? Because he's been in jail for so long. Uh, let's see here. Notice I'm sentencing. Okay. So he's going to get sentenced. Uh, I'm trying to notice a filing. I'm trying to see here because I know his lawyer wrote something to like try to get him a, a lower sentence. But I, I don't, I don't think they're going to, because what they're going to do is they're, I don't think he's going to get a lower sentence guys. Cause what they're going to probably do is they're going to try to illustrate that he was a mastermind right and he was a financer and since they're gonna or uh or uh, write it that would since they're probably gonna put him as the head right since he was the, he was a rapper he was the name he was the um the one financing everything else like that he's gonna probably get you know uh a good amount of time because they're, they're gonna they're gonna put him as like the they call they're not gonna call him the kingpin but they're gonna call him the head of the organization so yeah um but yeah it, it, yeah the, the court system moves kind of slow guys as y'all can see, right? So, and I think, did he plead guilty? He probably pled. Yeah, he definitely pled guilty by now. Let's see here. Plea. 
So if you guys do control F, because as you guys can see, this is a case that's been going on forever. Right? Oh, let me see here. Click Davis. All right, let me see here. Guilty. Uh, uh, guilty plea. How you find stuff here? Okay. So this is their okay. So this is their arraignment, guys. What the arraignment is, where you you know it's your formal it's your formal thing where you actually like, you know, enter in your your um your thing, you enter in your uh your plea. And of of course they're gonna say not guilty in the beginning. See, as you can see, this is up in like 2018. So as you get further and further along, okay, let me you know. What, let me put plea agreement. That's where I was gonna be. So there's certain search terms you should look for: plea agreement. Okay, here we go. Um, okay. Defendant pled guilty without a plea agreement. This accounts three and four, the superseding indictment. Okay. So who is that though? Uh, let me see here. Let's go open this shit up. View document. Sometimes you got to view it guys. Okay. So plea with counsel. Signature. Okay. So Michael, one of the guys, Michael Hunnett, whatever his name is, Hunnett, Hunnett cut. He pled guilty. Okay. But we don't really care about him. Let's see. Let's see. Agreement. Okay. Boom. And this is how you guys go through this stuff. I know Pacer is very, it's a government database, man. So you already know it's going to be a pain in the ass to go through. Um, Contavis Scott pled guilty. Um, Judge Michael Brown, Marky Thomas. Well, yeah, he better plead guilty. They hit him with the gun charges and everything. 